So I gotta say, what I really loved about Crawl was that it brought back that feeling of claustrophobia back. That's what I really liked about horror movies like The Strangers. And I like those tight spaces and all that kind of stuff. And what, what inspired you to uh, you know, go that route? I agree, you know, like um, on my last few movies before Crawl, I was more exploring the border of the genre. I was more like a, uh, Piranha was more like a horror comedy and Crawl was more like a fantasy, supernatural fable. Um, and I wanted to go back to something that was more uh, suspenseful driven, you know, like a, a, a more uh, uh, like a ride, the same way I tension was or, or the Hills of Eyes was. And I was reading the script and I was looking into material, I couldn't find something that felt like straightforward and simple enough to keep that suspense and that tension all the way and create like a, a visual experience of the edge of your seat and I read the script and I fell in love in fact with the log line before it was such a simple but what really got me was the idea of this new take on the home invasion you know the own invasion movie is usually like the killer is coming in the house the, the spirit is entering the place but I never really had like a read like a movie about nature breaking into the house and with nature and water and, and the hurricane come also your very old neighbors, well, like the alligators, and, and with the water rising, they become more and more, uh, you know, kind of fast and gnarly and, and, and predatory and, and, and scary. So I thought it was a good way to also have this feeling of claustrophobia. You know, it starts with the crawl space. And like, by definition, crawl space is like the most. Uh, um, you know, like very, very anxious and like feeling, you know, like you can really not, uh, uh, not think about being, you know, closing to some place like that, like a, a coffin, you know, in a house. But then with the water rising, I think every room in the house become like a, 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 something that just reduce and reduce with the space and the air being, you know, set down. But, even when you're out during a hurricane, that kind of very dark, gray, blue sky, it feels like it's you know pushing on you. That kind of pressure is creating also this feeling of being trapped. So the whole movie was kind of designed in a way that you never feel that you actually like, can escape, you know, when you like leave. I'm curious, by the way, for the hills I have eyes. You didn't get to direct a sequel. I was wondering for you as a director, I know you're working on another another project at the time. Does that hurt you inside to kind of lose control of your baby? I'm sure you don't want that to happen to Crawl. You know, there it, is a sequel. It, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing because uh, uh, there was like a sequel for The Hills of Eyes, there was a sequel for uh, uh, Piranha, there was a sequel for Neos. And I've never been involved in any of them. But for The Hills of Eyes and, and for Piranha, I actually had like an idea of a sequel and I wanted to make a sequel but I couldn't find an agreement with the studio at the time. You know, like for the Isavai's Wes Raven wanted to to do something that was not I didn't want to go with the army fighting like, in the I thought it was kind of like the most or too obvious uh, uh, kind of uh, take on the on the sequel and we had like a I think a, a, a stronger take. Maybe one day we will we will do it. But yeah, it's, it's a strange thing to not be uh, involved on something that we kind of created as well. Uh, on Crawl, we're talking about like uh, other stories and, and potential sequel, and hopefully it'll be. You know, I, I want to be involved. It's just like a. I think a sequel cannot be just uh, uh, you know like a commercial uh, motivation. Yeah. It needs to have a reason to exist. And in the story, have so many other characters that you can talk about, other situations, like a hurricane is covering such a wide area, alligators are everywhere. When we started making the movie, uh, there were like a few stories, but as we were making it, like these similar stories happened in Queensland, in Australia, it happened in some favela in, in Brazil, uh, with Cayman. You know, like there is, we're living in a time where you know, this kind of disaster, natural disaster, are more and more often. And so the stories where we 
we have to face nature again uh, seems to be you know kind of like what our future is made of so it's interesting to explore that in movies until we will explore that like in real life yeah. you know, uh, uh, in the very near future I, I like that you went into a very realistic route like uh, there was a time in a movie when they're going up the stairs all the way to the top of the house and I thought alright they're all gonna make it they're gonna be fine but then you know father loses his arm and I was wondering what was the motivation behind that you just wanted it to feel like um, as real as possible that it can't just be just a straight yes, happy I ending think, you know part of the survival story is no matter what you decide, even if you have a clear uh, idea of how to get out, everything is never happening the way you expect it to happen. And I think it's, um, you know, as a, as, a, as a writer and as a filmmaker, you have to embrace the fact that if you think about something, and you say, okay, that's what they're going to do now, you also have to be there and say, okay, we're not going to make that easy for them. And we're going to do exactly the opposite. So now they have to find another way out. And, and to keep pressuring them is just creating that kind of a, a, a feeling of experience for the audience. Where you think, oh no, this is happening, this is not happening. Again and again, you know, they come out and uh, the, 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 the Navy breaking is breaking them back in the house. There is that thing that just keep going and keep going and keep going. It just, it created a weird way some kind of fun because you, you know that nothing is going to be too simple, but also a feeling of um, reality of uh, you know, like in real life, most of the time you don't make it. Yeah. But this kind of extreme condition are just like, too hard. And those people, or two heroes, are like special in the way that she's trained and she's, you know, she's not. I will not survive half an hour in this movie. Yeah. I mean, I I felt the. Uh... I felt that was the right ending to go to, and, and I only have time for one more question, yes. I think. One more question. Um, what, what was, because I felt there was a lot of research into the alligators themselves, especially underwater when they're doing like the spin, when they're attacking. How much research did you spend like in preparation for the movie and I, shooting? And... I did a lot of research. I wanted to uh, be sure, and that was like one of the, the way I wanted to, uh, the movie to be approached. I wanted the movie to be about alligators the way they are in real life. There is like maybe five or six million alligators living in the wild in the south part of the, the, the US. And they are like the most uh, gnarly predator out there. I think they are more scary than any shark. The way the whole body is a, is a sensor to vibration in the water, the way the powerful muscle gives them like speed that they have when they are in the water, but also the fact that they, the way they kill people, like that famous death row where like a shark will cut you clean, like an alligator will just grab you and dismember you like chicken bone. And that's something that gets me really scared, you know, when I think about it. So I really want the movie to be full of that. So thanks to the internet, I watch hundreds of hours of footage, of documentary, of anything about alligators and crops. And I made a selection of all these clips that were like the most violent, the most scary, the most... Uh, because you can find tons of hours of footage where they just, you know, like sun bass and not move. And they're not very scary. But when they get into that predator mode and attack, they are like really, really fascinating. So this is what I gave to the visual effect company to create them and to give that feeling of... Uh, uh, realism because I didn't want them to have an agenda of revenge. I didn't want them to be oversized. I didn't want them to be anything but just real alligators. Did, did you choose the see you later alligator thing into the credit roll? Was that your choice? Yeah. It was that a nice was, touch. It, it, it started as almost like a, not like a, like a joke, but I remember going to Elliot, my alligator, and like, all right, we should put that at the end. And in fact, I was like, oh, this is really good, in fact, because that gave that kind of fun feeling of like, you know, this was an intense movie, yeah. but it's okay to be uh, uh, happy and, and go through that experience with a smile. So, yeah, you know, that was a fun one. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much.